Good morning, everybody. And this is Monday, so it's Mindset Monday. This is the Growth Compass, and my name is Sally Garozzo. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm a rapid transformational therapy practitioner. I am a vocal coach, and I'm the founder of Inspiring Talks Brighton. And it's my mission in life to help people overcome their, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> their self-sabotaging blocks. Um, in any and every area of their lives so they can dissolve them and really live the life that they deserve and that they want. And I do this through the power of the subconscious mind, um, which you can access through hypnosis. It's brilliant. And so today's mentoring is called Meditation for Mindset. So this is take two, because the first one, the connection dropped. So hopefully we'll get a few people joining us. I would like to ask you, how many of you watching have a regular meditation practice? How many of you think you should meditate but don't? <laughs> and how many of you just can't seem to do it or feel resistant to it in some way, shape or form? Now many of us do have a bit of a love-hate relationship with meditation, but I personally think we should persevere with it because it does offer us the opportunity to grow massively. So what is meditation? So basically meditation is when you sit quietly for uh, 10, 15 or 20 minutes and you focus on a meditation object. Hi Bridget, we're back, yay. Um, so the meditation object could be your breath, for example. Um, so I like to focus on the tip of my nose when I meditate and that feels very soothing very calming, very relaxing, but you have to find the meditation object that suits you. So some people like to focus on the sounds that they can hear around them, maybe the sounds of the traffic, maybe a piece of music they've put on, but it might even be like the whirring of a fridge or the air conditioning, or it might be, I wanna say your partner snoring. <laughs> maybe that's just me, but actually it can help, it can lull you to sleep if you see it as a positive thing. Um, some people like to focus on the sensations in the palms of their hands because your hands are very, very receptive to sensing energy. Some people like to just focus on the black under their eyes or the weight of themselves in the chair. So um, whatever your meditation object, oh yeah, some people like to focus on numbers. So you can count from one to 10 and then go back to one again. Um, and even a mantra and I've got a couple of my own mantras that I'll be sharing with you. So um, the trick is whenever you get lost in a thought, you kind of prick that thought with a little pin, like a bubble, pricking that thought, and then you come back to the meditation object that you have chosen. The key is to stick to one meditation object so that you're not flitting and that you come back once you realized you have been lost in thought. Now it might be, that you never realize you've been lost in thought. You can do 10 minutes of this and not realize you've been lost in thought. It depends how grippy your mind is. But for anyone that does experience anxiety, depression, OCD, any kind of mental sort of fluctuations in mood, it's so worth it. So meditation sounds very, very simple, but it's not always that easy and that's because the mind is very grippy and it can fluctuate. But I want to talk a little bit about the benefits of meditation because I really do think it is worth weaving into your practice as regularly as possible and you don't always have to do it sitting down either. You can do meditation um, whilst walking by focusing on the soles of your feet or your breath but I do find walking a little bit more stimulating. Um, and idea cultivating as well. So you don't really want to do something that's gonna create too many ideas whilst you're meditating, because you're gonna be so distracted, you're just gonna wanna write them all down. <laughs> um, so that's why sitting to meditate is quite good and most people's preferred way of meditating. So. When meditation is done correctly, it really does soothe the nervous system. It balances your mood, so it improves your relationships 
it improves your ability to focus on one thing at a time. So it helps you to, it's like a practice because we're because our energy fields are so split at the moment with social media and we do lots and lots of different things that our ability to focus tends to become fragmented. And so meditation re-enables us to learn how to focus. Because a lot of us have forgotten how to focus and we need that focus. We need it for continuing conversations. Um, we need it for having sex, making love, having good sex. Because if you're thinking about other things, you're not going to be in the present moment and you're not going to allow yourself to really open up and enjoy it. Um, where else do we get distracted? When we're listening to other people, we can just be off thinking about our own little world rather than actually listening to other people. And I think that's a very, very important skill. So um, <clears throat> the other thing <laughs> that meditation offers us is an opportunity to really make peace with what is. Um, and if what is is uncomfortable, it can, we can resist meditation. So if we do meditate, with feelings of discomfort, it allows us to try to make peace with what is and to try to relax the over controller part of ourselves. Um, but it also gives us the opportunity to move up the emotional scale. So perhaps we're feeling frustrated. A meditation gives us the opportunity to be able to move up towards feeling relaxed, feeling hopeful, feeling inspired, feeling kind, feeling compassionate. And that's when you're moving in the right direction there. One of the things I love about meditation is that it does have the ability to stretch time as well. So we can think that we don't have time to meditate, but it shifts our awareness of time because it slows everything down. And if you're interested in that, research Einstein time <laughs> as opposed to Newton time. And you'll um, get some good things pop up, I'm sure. Um, yes, so, and I know for me, meditation really helps me to be more creative. I can get lots and lots of ideas when I'm meditating. So if you're blocked creatively, if you're stuck, if you don't know which direction to go in life, try meditating. You might get some really cool ideas. So it's definitely worth doing, but why on earth are we resistant to meditating? And I think there are a few reasons. And I think firstly, because meditation feels a bit boring. The idea of it is like, uh, it's not that exciting. And it can feel like a waste of time, actually. And that's because I believe most of us now more than ever are addicted to dopamine. With social media, with work, we're constantly looking to grab onto or find the next high because it's exciting, okay? Now, of course, I'm not saying we shouldn't have any of those things. Of course, we need work, we need social media, we need friendships, we need to have fun, of course we do, but it's very, very overstimulating and it can put pressure on the adrenals. So then when we get overtired, what happens is we're looking for something to pick us up, to boost our energy, and so we reach for TV, because that's exciting. We reach for Tinder, we reach for sweets, we reach for alcohol, we reach for those things as a distraction from our tiredness. Um, and meditation tends to get overlooked because it's not a quick fix, you see. Um, and we want that quick fix. That's why we're resistant to it a lot of the time. And secondly, we're resistant to it because I think a lot of us tend to avoid feeling our feelings. Um, and what meditation does is it really highlights what we are feeling. It highlights what is already going on for us, and that may have been going on for us for many, many, many years. We don't even know it's there because we're always distracting ourselves. Um, uh, what am I saying here? Um, I'm just gonna read this. What meditation does is highlight what feelings are already there because when you're sitting there trying to focus on one thing, your mind always goes to the thought that is fueling your predominant feeling. So it's like a loop, yeah? And then you get more and more, that feeling can get quite heightened actually. 
So it highlights your predominant point of attraction, okay? And your dreams do this as well. This is your subconscious mind playing out. So what do I mean by your predominant point of attraction? So whatever emotion you regularly carry around with you, that is likely to show up first in your meditation. And unless it's pleasant, you might be resistant to feeling it, <laughs> okay? So unless it's ecstasy, ooh, um, none of us really wanna feel those feelings. So I would say most of us are carrying around feelings of frustration, need to control things, um, maybe slight irritability, maybe even anger, maybe tension, maybe stresses, definitely mental busyness. But underneath all of that, underneath those feelings are feelings of hurt, feelings of sadness, feelings of confusion, feelings of fear. And they're not really very pleasant feelings. And because your mind is always trying to move you away from something unpleasant, an unpleasant sensation towards a pleasant sensation, it will do whatever it can to make you avoid feeling those feelings. Excuse me. So the, long, the longer you kind of ignore those feelings, the longer you push them away, the more they will fester because they actually want a need to be felt. And then the more you'll end up, the likelihood is that you'll end up with headaches, back pain, and some kind of physical manifestations of these unfelt feelings. So the resistance is there because the mind wants to take you away from feeling them. But actually what we need to do is kind of override that and go to that Go to that discomfort and feel them and accept them and love them and try to understand why those feelings are there and then soothe those feelings. And meditation offers us an opportunity to really find out what is there, okay? And um, once we know what is there, we can deal with them. We can certainly make peace with them as well. So how can we overcome this resistance to meditation? Well, I think you need to love yourself enough to care about the way that you feel and to care about your growth, to care about your happiness and your levels of joy in your life. So you need to want to feel good and you need the faith that the consistency of daily meditation will make you feel good. So there's a few things in there. There's self-love, there's faith, You've got to trust that it will work and there's consistency. And those things will make you feel good uh, or meditation will make you feel good eventually. So it's a bit of a paradox. You don't get those feelings until you start the meditation. You're not motivated to want to start meditation until you know that it's gonna make you feel joy, right? So you kind of have to start anyway. It's like one of my students came and she didn't really want to practice her piano and she said, oh, I'm too kind of depressed to practice. And I said, well, why don't you just try starting and then see if it makes you feel better? And the likelihood is it is gonna make you feel better and it did make her feel better. So often we have to just do it. We have to have the faith that the consistency will bring us what we want. And it's tough. It's tough to face those feelings. It's not for the faint hearted, but I believe we're all being called at the moment to really address our stuff and meditation gives us the opportunity to do that. But it also, you know, even if there isn't a resistance, it's such a wonderful thing to do to make you feel calmer, more settled, and it actually gives you a boost of energy um, much more effectively than say, reaching for chocolate or cake or alcohol or wine. <laughs> so I've got a few meditation tips for you. Um, one of my favorite meditation tips is to try smiling while you're meditating. So a little smile on your face is um, enables, I don't know how it works actually, but it seems to activate a sense of peace, a sense of joy, um, very subtle, not sort of overwhelming euphoria, um, but it is nice, so I would try that if I were you. And a couple of mantras that I like to use are, I don't need anything to be different. So that's, 
such a lovely thing to just, oh, fine. Everything, the way that it is, is absolutely perfect. Um, I'm satisfied with what is and I'm eager for more. I love that. So it helps me to just be totally satisfied with what the present moment is bringing up, whether it's, you know, my hard drive's broken, crashed my car, <laughs> things aren't going that well, or, you know, there's stuff that needs to be dealt with. It's like, I'm satisfied with what is and I'm eager for more. That's great, I love that one. And if there is something negative in your life, maybe you've got something, uh, a legal thing coming up or something that's really bugging you or bothering you, I like to say to myself, something good will come of this. So if I'm having that thought, that train of thought is whirring out of control, I'll prick it with a, my little pin, I'll realize that something good will come of this and then come back to the present moment. And you can actually use that mantra with regard to your meditation as well. Something good will come of this. So that's all for now. I'm sorry the connection's been a bit on and off. Um, so if any of you have got any of your own personal experiences with meditation that you'd like to share or any apps or any, I don't know, books or authors or teachers that you feel we need to check out, to help us on our meditation journey, then please do share. Um, also, just so you know, next week I won't be doing a Mindset Monday because I'm going away, yay, well-deserved break. I'm going to an Airbnb um, just outside of Winchester for a nice relaxing time away. But I'll be back on the 18th of February and we're gonna be talking about stress and what stress actually is and how we can reframe it to help us see things differently. So that's all for now. Have a wonderful Monday and I'll see you often on this page. Um, and I'll be back in two weeks. Bye.